to show that Arthur and his knights were Essex men through and through, and Camelot none other than Colchester. In the 5th century, the whole centre of commerce and uh, war and military power was centred in the southeast, mainly in Colchester, because the threat came from the east. America hadn't been discovered. Uh, secondly, because the uh, ancient Roman name for Colchester is Camelodian. And thirdly, that when the Romans left in around about 407 AD, they left behind a general, a rearguard action, called General Artorius, and he became known locally as King Arthur. Such claims were given short shrift today by the burghers of Tintagel in Cornwall, who jealously guard their Arthurian associations and the revenue that flows from them. If I might, to begin with, just dispose of this absurd claim of Colchester, it is based on the spurious premise that a, a, a Roman legionnaire was left in charge of Colchester when the Romans pulled out in the year 407, uh, and that he became King Arthur. And yet, and yet, according to Nennius, who wrote in the 9th century, uh, King Arthur's last battle, in which he died at Camlan, uh, was in the year 516, more than 100 years later than their Arthur uh, was in charge of Colchester. I rather suspect they've chosen the wrong bloke. Back in North Essex, Alan Goldsmith insists this was Camelot country, and says nearby Colchester has a far better claim to Arthur and his knights than any the West Country can muster. They stole it from us and used it for many years, and good luck to them. We're just bringing him back to his rightful place and telling people where it was and where he should be. A total absurdity. Of course he didn't come from Essex. Roundtable discussion to sort out the rival claim seems out of the question. There may be only one way to settle the feud. Kim Riley, look east. 